I've said it before, but the classic Sega Genesis Sonic games are probably among some of the most ported games of all time. Just Sonic 1 alone has been re-released on the Sega Saturn, Sega Dreamcast, GameCube, Xbox, PlayStation 2, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, PSP, Apple iPod, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, Nintendo Wii, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Nintendo 3DS, Genesis Mini, Android, iPhone, and with at least two different separate PC ports as well as two different separate Nintendo Switch ports. The only games to have been re-released more times than Sonic 1 would be Doom or maybe Tetris. So there's a good chance you already own the 16-bit Sonic games on some platform or another, which means that you may have been scratching your head when Sega recently showed off the Sonic Origins collection for the first time. It's the newest collection of the classic Sonic games, containing Sonic 1, Sonic 2, both halves of Sonic 3, and Sonic CD. For many, this will be the second, third, or even fourth time that some of these games have been re-released on their chosen platform just in the last five years. Speaking personally, across my entire life, I've bought these games roughly seven times now. Should anyone care if they're getting re-released again? The answer, as you might have guessed from the title of this video, is yeah, actually. Chances are, if you own Sega Genesis games on any platform that isn't the original 1990s Sega Genesis, those games are being run through something known as emulation. Now I know, a lot of you out there are familiar with what emulation is. But if you aren't familiar, emulation is basically the process of breaking a piece of computer hardware down into raw code, and then executing that code on a different platform. Instead of a microchip processing the data to make the game run, it's an app on your computer that's doing it. It's basically a form of hardware simulation, but called emulation instead. There have been numerous uses for emulation over the years, both legal and illegal. If you remember the Virtual Console on the Nintendo Wii, all of those games were running using an official form of emulation. Most commonly, emulators are popular on the computer, where you can play retro games from just about any console you can ever think of. Everything from the original Atari 2600 to arcade games to recent consoles like the Wii U, which opens the door for a whole host of legally questionable discussions we won't be touching on here. One of the most important features of an emulator is accuracy. After all, if you're emulating a game, you want it to play exactly the way it did on the original hardware. That's kind of the whole point. But accuracy is hard to come by. It takes a long time to develop accurate emulators, with some having been in development for the better part of a decade. And the more accurate an emulator is, the more powerful hardware you need to run that emulator. Those two things usually mean that when it comes to corporations developing official emulators, they usually aren't very good. Re-releasing retro games is often a way for them to make a fast buck, so there isn't enough time or a big enough budget to justify a properly accurate emulator. For Sega, this has presented a big challenge for them, because they have a long history of hardware that is notoriously tricky to emulate. Everything from processor synchronization issues with the Sega CD and 32X to the Sega Saturn's whole… situation. This means that there are a lot of games that Sega refuses to do anything with because they're considered too much work to emulate. It's not that they can't ever be emulated, because often you can emulate these games just fine on a PC. But from Sega's standpoint of developing their own emulator that's good enough to handle these games, it apparently costs too much time and too much money to be worth the effort. Especially when you consider that in the quarter of a century Sega has been emulating the Sega Genesis, they have almost never gotten the sound emulation right. So if you already own a modern collection of Sega Genesis games, there's a good chance your games sound like this. when they should sound more like this.
This is because of inaccurate emulation with the Sega Genesis sound hardware, and most emulators Sega has relied on don't bother to make it sound right. More recent emulators, like the ones used in the Sega Ages games on the Switch, do sound more accurate, but the library of supported games there is pretty small. On top of that, accurate emulation comes with another price, and that is latency. Emulation is like translating from one language to another, and that process of translation will always take some amount of time. The slower the machine doing the translation, the more lag there will be between the game and the buttons you're pressing on your controller. And just a few milliseconds of emulation latency is all it takes to ruin how a game feels to control. The thing about Sonic Origins is that it sidesteps these problems completely. Sonic Origins isn't emulation. It's a continuation of the work that Christian Whitehead and Simon Tomley were doing when Sega signed them and their team to create Sonic Mania. These games have essentially been decompiled into their raw source code and rewritten using something called Retro Engine. It's a framework initially developed by Whitehead for creating brand new retro style games and utilizing Simon Tomley's encyclopedic knowledge of the inner workings of the Sonic code base, they used the retro engine to rebuild Sonic CD for consoles in 2011, as well as Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 exclusively for mobile phones in 2013. Version 5 of Retro Engine even powered Sonic Mania in 2017. Because we're talking about native code execution and not an emulator translation, poor sound quality and controller lag won't be an issue in Sonic Origins. All of these games will look, sound, and feel just as good as they did in the 90s, if not better. Because even though you can play these games in Sonic Origins as they originally were in the 90s, you can also play them with widescreen visuals and other new features that are only possible with these kinds of source code modifications. There are boss rushes and mission modes and all kinds of other cool bonus stuff. These aren't just the Genesis Sonic games. These are enhanced and expanded in ways that would be difficult to do with an emulator. It's backed up by a killer's row of passionate, talented Sonic fans who are doing their best to ensure that Sonic Origins gets everything right. Origins will feature the original Retro Engine remakes of Sonic 1, Sonic 2, and Sonic CD. As stated, these were developed basically a decade ago by Christian Whitehead and Simon Tomley, the pair that would later form the foundation of Sonic Mania's development team in 2016. In addition to widescreen, these retro engine versions have other fun bonus features, like the ability to play as Tails in Sonic CD and the ability to play as Knuckles in Sonic 1. They also feature impressive enhancements, like Sonic 2's special stage running at 60 frames per second. This will be the first time the retro engine versions of Sonic 1 and 2 will see console releases, which is a good thing because, in my opinion, they were underappreciated for a long, long time. Returning to develop a retro engine remake of Sonic 3, we once again have Simon Tomley, who is better known to the community under the username Stealth. Stealth is one of the founding fathers of the Sonic hacking community. He developed the SonEd2 level editor, he worked on the Sonic Mega Mix hack, and he has been one of the instrumental figures in deconstructing the Sega Genesis Sonic games in order to understand how they work. Countless Sonic fan games and ROM hacks would not have been possible without the knowledge Stealth shared with the community and he brings that expertise to remaking Sonic 3. He is aided by the coding talent The Stone Banana and Mr. Poe. It's hard to find much info online about The Stone Banana, outside of the fact that they were involved in a pretty technical hack of Sonic 3 & Knuckles a few years ago called Dr. Yundong. Mr. Poe, on the other hand, is a name I recognize straight away, as he was one of the many figures behind the Sonic Worlds codebase. If you've played a Sonic fan game made in Click Team Fusion in the last eight years, chances are it probably contains code written by Mr. Poe. He's been involved in a number of other projects since then, but it's important to note that Sonic Worlds, and by extension, Mr. Poe, helped bring us games like the original Freedom Planet and Spark the Electric Jester. 
Restoration of Sonic CD's full motion video is being handled by Brady Hartel and the users known as Tanks404 and Quaza. Those last two names are part of Kaneko Video, a small independent film restoration group. Generally, they take old film reels, digitally scan them into the computer, and then meticulously remove scratches and other imperfections. Most recently, Tanks and Quaza were involved in Kaneko's 4K restoration of the long-lost Super Mario Bros. anime from 1986. Though they are a small group, they do extremely high-quality, professional work. Meanwhile, Brady Hartel has been around the game industry in all kinds of roles over the years. His work includes graphic design for Skullgirls and Indivisible while at Lab Zero Games, plus he's done video work on Shantae and Sonic Mania. Notably, Brady Hartel is a producer at Discotech Media, where he designs the box art for their vintage anime restorations. But, most notably, he is also often involved in the process of restoring the anime itself, combing through old laser discs and videotapes frame by frame, looking for problems that need fixing. Anime News Network credits him with working on 71 anime and counting while at Discotech, including Lupin the Third, Dr. Slump, Fatal Fury, and Street Fighter II The Motion Picture. He has also assisted on restoring Sonic CD's FMV by fellow Discotech alumni Elaine Moreland. Despite the quality of Sega's Sonic CD Master videos having degraded over the years, these are video restoration experts, and it all but guarantees that Sonic CD's video sequences will look the best they ever have, and quite possibly the best they ever will. Sonic Origins will also feature its own original animated videos, headed by Tyson Hess and Powerhouse Animation Studios. If you've been paying close attention to the last five years of the Sonic franchise, then Tyson Hess needs no introduction. He's basically been the secret weapon working behind the scenes to steer many different Sonic projects in the right direction. He started doing art for the Archie Sonic comics right as that thing was starting to make a turn for the better, and he helped launch the IDW Sonic comics. He was also instrumental in all of the animation in Sonic Mania, including the Sonic Mania Adventures animated series and that work continued to other Sega Animation projects, like Team Sonic Racing Overdrive, Chow in Space, and Rise of the Wisps. More significantly, he was brought on to help redesign Sonic the Hedgehog in the Sonic Movie, where he did more than just character design, and even helped retool the plot of the film itself. And now here he is, directing powerhouse animation on the story mode cutscenes in Sonic Origins. If I were Sega, I would guard this guy with my life, because he's clearly worth his weight in gold. The day Tyson Hess isn't allowed to work on the Sonic franchise will be a tragic one, because he seems to be part of everything good about Sonic lately. And if you didn't pick up on that, Sonic Origins now features a brand new story mode that stitches all four games together, bridging each one with lavishly animated cutscenes. Better yet, these story sequences are being written by none other than Ian Flynn. He was the one responsible for getting the Archie Sonic comics back on track just before their cancellation. He's also been a key figure in the IDW Sonic comics, and fans have been begging for Sega to let him write the games for years. He's basically the most talented writer to ever touch the Sonic franchise, and his inclusion here is a good sign. Rounding out the list of talent is Andy Collins and the user Dashpad SPD, handling all of the new artwork for Sonic Origins. You may know Andy Collins as the host of Son of a Glitch over on the A Plus Start YouTube channel. It's his knack for visual design that has helped him earn close to a million subscribers as of this recording. Dashpad has worked with Stealth in the past on a game called Peer Pressure, a project that Stealth helped develop after he finished his work on Sonic Mania. If I'm being honest, it's a little hard to find information on some of these people. I'm mostly following various Twitter threads referencing everyone on the project and what they're doing, but I'm sure there are even more people working on Sonic Origins with lots and lots of talent. I just don't want anyone feeling like they're being left out. Because my point in all of this is, Sonic Origins is being made with just as much love and talent as Sonic Mania. This isn't just another cheap collection of the classic Sega Genesis Sonic games. These have the possibility to become the definitive way to experience these games going forward. 
no frame rate slowdowns, no input lag, with an expanded view distance and pristine crystal clear audio, plus new features that you can't get in any other version of these games. It's also most notably the first time Sega has majorly acknowledged the existence of Sonic the Hedgehog 3 in probably more than a decade. You can go watch my two Sonic 3 videos to learn more about that, but the short version is that Sega teamed up with Michael Jackson to produce music for Sonic 3. For reasons that are hotly debated to this day, Michael departed from the projects and it seems like Sega was supposed to remove his music, but didn't. This created a problem when Michael Jackson's production team started claiming Sega owed them years worth of royalties and were threatening to start a legal battle. Rather than deal with the legal battle, Sega quietly swept Sonic 3 under the rug for a number of years, barely acknowledging that the game existed at all. Sonic Origins will mark the first time since 2011 that a new version of Sonic 3 will have been re-released. Which is awesome! But it does beg the question of what will happen to the songs purported to be produced by Michael Jackson. I'm willing to bet that they're going to get replaced. After all, just days before my first Sonic 3 video went live, a brand new prototype of Sonic 3 was discovered with alternate music, conveniently replacing all of the songs that were assumed to be tied to Michael. I can very much see Sega washing their hands of the whole legal quagmire and just using the alternate music from now on. Though, for those of you worried about losing the old music, I'm sure fans will mod the original tracks back into the PC version. That PC version will be its own can of worms, however, thanks to the announcement that Sega has chosen to use the anti-piracy software known as Denuvo. If you're in the dark as to why so many people don't seem to like Denuvo, it basically gobbles up tons of system resources and can both slow the game down and your computer. If you watched my Sonic Mania reviews and noticed the game stuttering in the footage I captured, that was most likely due to Denuvo sucking the life out of my machine like a vampire. The good news is, Denuvo was eventually removed from Sonic Mania by Sega, so there's precedent that it may also eventually get removed from Sonic Origins. Then again, Denuvo is also present in the PC port of Sonic Forces, and to this day has never been removed. The same goes for the PC port of Team Sonic Racing, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see on this one. The only other bummer, then, is the price. At launch, the base version of Sonic Origins will retail for $40, with even more bonus content being locked behind a special Digital Deluxe Edition, retailing for $45. Given that the previous versions of these four games would cost less than $20 if purchased together, the $45 price tag for Sonic Origins undoubtedly looks a little steep. That is also probably why Sega is planning to delist the older versions before Sonic Origins releases. Now, to be fair, there is a metric ton of extras announced for Sonic Origins. If you remember, there's the new animated story mode, a mission mode where you have to complete tasks in a time limit, a mirror mode where you have to play all of the games flipped backwards, the anniversary mode with the expanded widescreen visuals, and even more things they aren't talking about at the time of this recording. People have spotted what seems to be Sonic Mania's drop dash being used in Sonic 3, and there's a curious edit icon next to Sonic's player sprite in the menu, almost like you can change his appearance. Again, this is a project by the Mania, created for the Mania. Sega is even promising that Sonic Origins will contain brand new, never-before-seen developmental materials for these games. This could mean concept art or even video footage of early prototypes that have never been shown to the public before. Sonic Origins is set to be something very special indeed, and could end up being the greatest collection of these games ever released. But whether or not it's worth $45 ultimately depends on how much you care about this blue rat. At worst, you could always wait for a sale, I guess. Since Sonic Origins is coming out in June, it's guaranteed to take a hit down to at least $30 or even $20 by Christmas. And it'll only keep going lower from there. But for me, even though I already own these games so many times over, even though I've already played and replayed them dozens and dozens and dozens of times, I'm still going to be there day one. 
if for no other reason than to encourage Sega to keep pulling talented, passionate fans into projects. Because right now, those are the best things that Sonic has going. Thank you for watching the video. I know that some of you will be celebrating that I'm back or whatever, especially after my last video, but don't celebrate just yet. I'm trying to make videos for as long as I can, especially given I've promised certain things to my audience over the years. All I can really say is that if you like this video, you should really consider donating on Patreon. Patreon literally pays for my groceries now. I know that things were weird and things are still weird. But if you stuck with me through it all, I really, really do thank you from the bottom of my heart. A special thanks goes out to Ed Boy, Dragon, Melko Driggs, This Dorky Guy, Sabrina, Sam B, L, Fiesta, Ashley, Anders, Logan, Ryan L, Minka, Keith, Setsune, Big Knife, Rose, and Teko. I will continue to do my best for as long as I'm allowed to. And I'll need all the support I can get. Stay tuned, and hopefully you'll see what I have planned. See you on the next one. If there is a next one.